Yeah. Okay, thank you. Is this about the right position for the mic? Um, I think we can go to the next slide. That's self-sufficient, uh, self-explanatory. Um, IOTA is the owner of the rights to the timing device, um, and they receive a royalty on every unit that is sold. Next slide. <coughs> The uh, oversight committee was part of the deal when the device was originally designed in 2010. Uh, in 2011, they went through a formal process of, uh, that is Dave Galt and Tony Berry, of donating the, uh, the rights to IOTA. And, uh, and part of the requirement is to have a steering committee, and that's Dave and Tony, the two IOTA officers you see there, and Paul Maley as a, as a fifth person. The next slide. Uh, from uh, beginning in March of 2011 until this summer, um, I have been the proprietor of Video Timers, which has had the license to manufacture and sell. And uh, you see the, uh, the mention there of Sandy Bumgarner, a good friend of us all. Uh -huh. he, I think he was well satisfied that he completed the, the major, the real and significant improvements and design things for the device before he died. Next slide. Um, beginning in July of this year, uh, there's a new outfit called Video Timers Maryland, or MD, that has the license now to manufacture and sell the device, and that's Bob Alberger in Owings Mills, Maryland. Um, the videotimers.com website is unchanged except for the management. It's now his responsibility instead of mine. And that's part of the, the choice of his, his choice of business name in order to keep it simple on the website to, uh, and the, 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 the website name appears on the device, on the back panel, and so that doesn't have to be changed either. Now, the next few slides are repeat from last year. I'll go through them very briefly. I thought, well, I don't need to repeat that. But at the same time, there's some history here, and I think to get a little different audience each year, it doesn't hurt to, to repeat that. The various versions that went through are summarized there. Uh, the first version for less than a year. The next one uh, dropped the power by a factor two from two watts to one watt and make some other improvements. Um, added a spare fuse in there. The uh, uh, big change came uh, when, well, I just have version two described here, a bunch of small changes to the version two. Next slide. Uh, and here is a close-up of the picture. You see the blue board there is an add-on. It's an Arduino board. And so the, the microprocessor was part of that and other things. Uh, the GPS down in the corner was held on with double-stick tape and it had a separate little cord to plug in. It all worked very nicely. This is for versions one and two. Next slide. Um, then in March of 2014, the manufacturer of the GPS dropped it, and they replaced the, the 406A with the 506A, and it's a drop-in replacement, except it didn't. It didn't work for us, so we had to scramble around and find a new GPS, and that to ran, I was really scrambling to get the last of the inventory of the 406A to complete the, the version 2 boards that I had, uh, but... Uh, the other reason to make the change, the Arduino board had been discontinued and a person could only buy them as a knockoff copy from China and the reliability was terrible. I was getting like 20% of them would fail and just throw them away. Um, the good news was they were gotten to be pretty cheap at that point, <laughs> but it's good to be rid of that. And next slide. The, uh, we shifted to a new generation of GPS, a significant improvement in a number of ways, uh, but it required major revision of the software. That was Tony Berry's job, and he came through great for us on that. Um, the, 
the case and the printed circuit board are still the same size, but I suspect like half the components on the board had to be at least moved, if not changed. The functions that have been on the Arduino board were now deposited onto the motherboard, which is a more reliable kind of thing and simplification in other ways, and ended up with a, a really nice improved product. And so uh, that the date's there. We, we A few months I had nothing to sell because of the transition time. But we've been in business now for two and a half years with version three. Uh, and this is a look at that. The microprocessor you see in the center there is now the guts of what was on the Arduino board. In fact, it's the same microprocessor it's now here instead of on their separate plug-in board. Uh, the GPS, it was very small, but now it's smaller. Um, it adds a lithium ion battery in order to keep the memory, so we now have a non-volatile uh, memory. The lithium ion cell, the calculation is that it's good for three years, and we haven't had it in use that long. I haven't heard any reports of anybody that had their cell died. I recently turned on one that I think has been idle since for almost uh, uh, since 2015, so I think that battery has been in that case alive for over two years, and it works fine. But at some point, there'll be a, a warning at the bottom of the screen, and to turn it on, the battery has failed. So replace the battery or you lose your memory. Next slide. Well, has that happened before it's dead? And so the warning that you better do it now and we'll... The, when, you, when you turn the device on, the first 10 seconds or so is what they call a splash screen. And at the end of that period, across the bottom is written, battery OK or battery not OK. So a person should look, when you first turn the device on, look for that information at the bottom of the screen. It doesn't show uh, for several seconds. It, have to, to, it has to think about it a while and analyze and check the voltage, and then it'll give you a message across the bottom. It's OK or it's not OK. So keep looking for that. The device is still fine. It's just that if the battery voltage gets too low, it won't remember the memory. So you then you might you you have a volatile uh, almanac then instead of a an assured almanac. It's no major problem, but to to uh, to know that you have a valid almanac within a minute versus within 15 minutes is a real difference. Uh, this is looking at the outside of the cases, the version 1 and 2 on the left and version 3 on the right. And uh, no changes in the front. In the back, I had to remove some holes and add some holes. But the same case fits. And just in the, and as an aside there, this case, we, when it started in 2011, Sandy had picked a case which is very similar but a different manufacturer. We liked it very much. But it ran into a very practical problem. Anybody who's been in any sort of manufacturing can understand. It turned out trying to get somebody to do the silk screening and the cutting on the front panels was very expensive. We finally found a separate a manufacturer of a case, varied only by a fraction of an inch in the size, changed general, same general shape, but they also in-house would do the silk screening. And the difference in the cost of the device in the production was the order of $20 per unit. And to get that breakthrough of somebody to do the thing, a reasonable silk screening price was a learning experience for me and a real cost saving. Okay, next. Uh, this shows the, the error kind of notification is present. Uh, on all the, the devices, a little bit different sequence on version 3. The, uh, the out of VTI checks for a variety of errors. I think there are five or six types of errors it recognizes. It checks for every one of those every second. If it finds one of them, it lets you know. If the, um, maybe back up one, we still have, okay. Uh, maybe maybe I skipped some there. Here you see the battery OK. Notice that when the splash screen is on, that bottom line doesn't appear for several seconds. When it does, it'll either say OK or not OK. So OK, proceed. Yeah. OK, this shows the position screen. And uh, there you see the, uh, the arrow is pointing out 
that the error mode is persistent. If an error appears, it will stay on the screen. The only real, the, the alternative mode is transient. And I think everybody should be using the transient mode. The devices, I've always sent them in the transient mode because if it's persistent, it'll hang around. If it's transient, it'll show it for five seconds and it'll go away. If you're recording and you needed to know it, it'll be a part of your record, but then it'll get out of the way of your view. Okay, the next slide now. Okay, this is, this is showing an error. In the transient mode, that would show just for, for five seconds. In the persistent mode, it'd stay on there until you did a reset of some sort. Next slide again. Here, I, I forced a bunch of errors by burying the device. And so you can see in a matter of, of uh, uh, a couple minutes, I got a sequence of errors. In the persistent mode, those will hang around until you either reset the device or switch to the time mode. You go to time mode and back, it'll, it'll wipe out the error notification. Okay, next. Um, the two things are critical about production of device. The Mac 7456 chip is the uh, one that writes the information to the, to, to the, uh, the position information, the time information, it puts it on the video signal. And that was discontinued about a year ago. The supply is, was obtained in advance. It's hopefully supply on hand now will be uh, enough to meet the, the lifetime of production. Uh, the PA6H uh, GPS has been used in version 3 uh, is still available and uh, we hope that it will continue to be available. But that's a weakness in the, in the lifetime of the product. Okay, something you kind of miss in there. Is this charts? slow coming up? I don't see a chart. No, it's just the number on the bottom is all we have is at 484. Mm. Okay, this is total sales. That's a number of sales and it's a, a bar chart and it shows ups and downs because it's, a, it's not a uniform number. <laughs> as many as, uh, I think as many as 30 or 40 units in a quarter and as few as, as uh, five or so. But the total is numbers like 500 or so. Next. Right, so the charts are not okay, similar, so the, and this, this bar chart is similar. It's the comparable thing quarter by quarter, except for the dollars of royalty, uh, the royalties have been paid. And uh, that's the same, well, it's just added to the chart from last year. And that's the, the last slide, I think. Yep. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, so the version 3, instead of having the 15 minutes before it finally has the, the right almanac, can you repeat the question? No. Uh, the question is on version 3, uh, do you have to still have to wait 15 minutes to assure an almanac? The answer is no, except for the first time. When you turn it on, uh, like any other GPS, it takes up to 15 minutes to get a, a current almanac. The presence of an active battery in, in the version 3 keeps the memory alive so that the unit remembers that almanac. And uh, so in principle, you should have a valid almanac as soon as you get uh, four satellites. Um, a person should always check. Now, for example, watch the transition with a leap second added, and it pops up within a fairly short time. It has a new correct uh, almanac, uh, but uh, it's, you know, I don't know how to describe this in, in real words. The GPS is unchanged, its memory is what's changed. And uh, so if the battery is, is still okay, you should have something valid right away, but I would always recommend turn the power on the first thing you're doing to set up and know that 15 minutes have gone by before you have a time that, that matters to you. And when, if there is a change like due to the leap second, uh, that message will appear. And if it's happening right when you're recording an occultation, it'll appear in part of your record. And then if you're transient mode, it'll go away in five seconds, but you'll know that it happened. So ideally, when the leap second happens, then we need 15 minutes before it's happy. But then no. the next leap second in a year or two. Oh, 
But when the leap second happened, when the leap second happened, it recognizes that within seconds and it corrects itself. Uh, then it remembers it if the memory is not uh, volatile. <laughs> so is there a message that comes up that says your times are good? So no, it's, the yeah, the, the question is whether there's a message to say that the times are good. Um, no, there is not. Um, you're thinking of the Kiwi kind of situation. The Kiwi goes about it quite differently. It gets a time originally, then it simply counts frames. It never checks to confirm that the time is good. If it didn't find anything, if, if 15 minutes later you, you take a check, and it says times are good, that says it didn't find any discontinuities in that 15 minutes. On the out of VTI, it's checking every second. So if something happens there, you'll know it then. Uh, and so the, the message, that say the times are good, doesn't have the same meaning. Yes? But you do get a little icon that shows up, a little um, hourglass. hourglass saying that the times aren't good, right? Uh, the, that's true. The hourglass down there in the lower left corner uh, lets you know that you've had a, a, a valid almanac. The almanac has been updated. The, on the older versions, that hourglass may change or go away in a matter of two minutes if you have uh, a good connection and so on, or it'll always go away within 15 minutes. On the IOTA VTI version 3, that generally the hourglass just doesn't appear because you have valid times. Yeah, it's a good device. <laughs> Thank you very much, Will.